Giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Baal Shem, Yahweh Shai, Baal Shem, Rekakwadash. Shalom to the Lord's elect, the brothers and sisters of the household of faith, and the children that are slated to be uh, saved. Uh, once again, giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Baal Shem, Yahweh Shai, Baal Shem, Rekakwadash. Okay, so you see the title of this video on screen. They knew his parents. They knew his parents. Of course, I'm talking about Yahweh Shai, who had biological parents. He had a father and a mother. A biological father, a biological mother. If you're teaching anything different, you ear not knowing the scriptures. Also, you're an antichrist. Okay which the, the word Christ is uh, watered down Greek for the Greek word Christos, which means anointed. So you're against the Lord's anointed, which are the elect, just by teaching that doctrine. In other words, the so-called sexless virgin birth doctrine. Okay? And uh, the subtitle of this video will be response to the sexless the sexless virgin birth nonsense. In other words, uh, Mary brought forth a son without sex, without the act of sex. Because indeed, Mary was a virgin, which the word virgin means young woman. It could either mean young woman, depending on the context of the Hebrew, and I'm going to show you that in the video, it could either mean young woman or a young woman of marriageable age, or a, or a woman that's a virgin, as in she's never been touched by a man. Her, her vagina is still intact. And the, the Hebrew word for that is bathwala, as you will see. Now, the other virgin is just a young woman who is of marriageable age, okay? And the Hebrew word for that, that's a young woman who, who's had sex. She's a young woman. The Hebrew word for that is ayalama or ayalama, okay? Ayalama, that's it. And uh, again, I'm going to show you that in this video, okay? So without further ado, as you see here, I got some scriptures to go into to prove the point that they knew his parents. Also, we're going to take a look at the uh, origin of the virgin birth when it came about. Actually, I should say the sexless virgin birth, as in Mary never had sex, but she was able to conceive a son as a virgin, meaning a young woman. She never had sex. She was able to conceive a son, which is nonsense, okay? She conceived that son through sperm, through the act of sex. And the one who gave her that sperm, his name was Joseph, and he was of the line of David, the line of King David. That's why one of the titles that the Lord was called was the son of David, because he came from that line, what is known as the Davidic, the Davidic line, the Davidic line. He came from that family, okay? He came from that stock. And the way he came through, from that stock, that family, is through the sperm, the sperm. The sperm that Joseph had went all the way back to the Davidic line. Indeed, Joseph, his biological father, was of the house of David. The scriptures is very clear on this. And you will discover, right, that <clears throat> the belief of the virgin birth, that didn't come until more than a hundred years after the death and resurrection of our Lord. To put it to you this way, during the time of our Lord, when he was walking the earth, his, his townspeople, all right, the people of Nazareth and the immediate areas, they knew full well Yahweh Shai's family. They knew his father and they knew his mother. All right, that doctrine wasn't taught concerning the Lord, concerning Yahweh Shai, which the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. That doctrine was not taught. Okay, that 
sexless virgin birth nonsense. You know, people had more sense back then. Okay? They knew Yahweh Shai's father. They knew his mother. They knew his family line. They knew his brothers, his biological brothers, because indeed he had biological brothers. All right? Which the Bible gives us their names. Jude, James, Simon, Josies. And they knew his sisters. However, the Bible doesn't give us the name of his sisters. Okay? He had biological brothers. He had biological sisters. From the same two parents, Joseph and Mary. Okay? These are all facts. So, what inspired me to do this video was... This video I was watching here, earlier I was um, cycling, you know, and doing what I do, getting that exercise in, which is very important. You know, two things that are very important in our lives, us brothers and you sisters out there, diet and exercise, diet and exercise. I don't know which one is, is more important. Both are equally important. Your diet, what you eat, and exercising. Like the song says, you know, uh, Gino Vanelli, people got to move. That's what exercising is about, moving, getting out there. And I don't care if you're walking or cycling or both, which ideally you want to do both. You want to uh, cycle, uh, cycling, which I believe in cycling, and walking, those two. By doing that um, consistently, you will be in shape. You will be in shape, okay? Card your cardio will be in shape. Your body will be in shape. So that's very important, okay? So while I was out there cycling, and I was, it was myself and um, Elder Bishop Ibad, um, I was listening to, while I'm cycling, I like to, either I'm listening to videos or music. In this case, I was listening to Elder Pastor's video, this video here. All right, entitled, Whosoever have not from him shall be taken away even that he have. And he's, Elder Pastor is responding to a video put up by a Fopi, and the head of Fopi, um, Quanaf, which he gave himself the title Elder Quanaf. You know, <laughs> everybody's an elder now, okay? Anyway, um, in this video, you'll hear Kornaf say, basically, the, 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 uh, the doctrine of uh, the Hebrew Israelites, basically, he, he's, he's thrown out a majority of the tenets of the doctrine of the Hebrew Israelites, okay? He doesn't believe in the uh, fact that Joseph and Mary... Joseph is the biological father of Yahweh Shai. He doesn't believe that. He doesn't believe in the speckled bird. All right? He doesn't believe that. All right? He mentions a few things in this gospel that he doesn't believe. And like Elder Pastor said, the Heavenly Father had, had given him the truth, and the Heavenly Father took it away from him. The scriptures speak about that. You know, the scripture speaks about enduring sound doctrine. He was one uh, elder Quanaf, that's what he calls himself. He's no elder, believe you me. All right, it speaks about those that cannot endure sound doctrine. All right, that's one of the signs of an individual that is not part of the elect, that was called but not chosen. One of the major signs is he cannot endure sound doctrine. The Bible speaks about enduring doctrine sound doctrine okay and the word endure means to make tough so you got to be tough to deal with this truth and a lot of guys just can't cut it man they can't cut it so they get cut okay we have to endure sound doctrine speaking of endure matthew 24 and 13 but he that shall endure unto the end the same shall be saved so one of the things we have to endure is sound doctrine, all right? Because it's easy for our minds, if we can't endure sound doctrine, it'll be easy for our minds to become corrupt. And that's what happened with 
pranaf. His mind became corrupt. And that's why all, all the truth that he learned, he vomited it, he vomit, vomited it out. And you can clearly hear that in the video that Elder Pastor responded to. All right, all that honey, like the scripture speaks about, has thou found honey, eat, eat so much as is sufficient for thee. Let me show you that before I read the end your part. This scripture is likened unto honey. All right, Ezekiel goes into that, where Ezekiel said, the word was in my mouth sweet as honey. Also, uh, the book of Revelation, the apostle John said the same thing about this knowledge, this truth being a being likened unto honey. Now we know if we eat too much honey, you become sick and you vomit out all the honey that you ate. Okay? Honey is a good thing, but if you eat too much of it, you become sick. Let me read that scripture to you. Found honey. Honey. It is right here. And this is what happened to Quanaf. Okay? Proverbs 25 and 16. Has thou found honey? What is that? That's a metaphor for this knowledge, this truth, which is likened unto honey. I gave you two scriptures. Ezekiel, I think it's around the second chapter. And uh, Revelation, I think it's around the tenth chapter. One in the Old Testament, one in the New Testament, which proves this knowledge, this truth, is a metaphor for honey. So has thou found honey, you were called into this knowledge, this truth, so you found that honey. Eat so much as is sufficient for thee. Right? Eat, and we eat it with our what? With our minds. Lest thou be filled therewith and vomit it. And that's exactly what happened with Kornaf. Okay? He started taking on parts of this knowledge, this truth, which he simply could not understand. Didn't have enough faith to understand. Didn't have enough uh, insight to grasp it. So immediately he became offended and vomited up everything that he learned. And you can hear that in the video. Everything that he was chastising of the truth. And now he speaks ill of it. So that's what happened to him. Has thou found honey? Eat so much as is sufficient for thee. Least thou be filled therewith and vomit it. Let's read that in the NLT. Do you like honey? Don't eat too much or it will make you sick. There you go. And he, now he's sick in the mind. Kornaf is just, he's just gone. He's sick in the mind. Okay. So at this point, let's get to the video. And um, I'm going to stop it around the point where they talk about the, the uh, virgin birth right and i'm going to bring some points out in relation to this lesson which will be entitled they knew his parents which that is one of the examples that destroys the virgin birth as in the sexless virgin birth indeed our lord had a biological father his townspeople knew it that's one of the reasons why i know i'm jumping a little ahead but that's one of the reasons why they didn't want to accept him as being divine all right, when he said he's the bread that came down from heaven, they had a problem. His, the, 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 his townspeople had a problem with that. They said, look, man, we know your father and mother. Who the, what makes you so special? What do you mean you came down from heaven? What are you talking about? That was their attitude towards the Lord. So if it was known that his father was this supernatural being, all right, they would have had no problem accepting when he said he came down from heaven. Who had no problem with it? Why did they, the question is why did they have a problem with it? As you will see in the scripture, when he made that statement, why did they have a problem with it? Because they knew his father and mother. That's why. Okay, so I know I jumped up ahead, but I tend to do that. But anyway, let's get to the video. Shalom, giving all praise to Yahweh. Shalom, 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 Anyway, I'm going to entitle this video, Any Israelite Group Teaching That Joseph Never Had Sex With Mary Is Off. Yeah, big time. Capital O, capital F, capital F, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. 
This is madness. Anyway, this is what happens when you don't come through the straight gate. Mm -hmm. You come in your own way. You do your own thing. You're not born again. And I just stumbled upon this uh, video, which was put up two years. And to add to Apostol, also when you cannot endure sound doctrine. As a matter of fact, I did not go into that. Let's go into it. That's key, man. The ability to endure sound doctrine so that your mind don't be corrupt. The Apostle Paul spoke about that. The, uh, the simplicity of Yahweh Shai, that your minds be not corrupted from the simplicity that is in Yahweh Shai. It's an easy thing to understand that our, our, our Lord, Yahweh Shai, had a biological father. I mean, <laughs> anyway, let's, let's just move on. I mean, if you want to talk about a person who didn't have a biological father or mother, then you could talk about Melchizedek. He didn't have a biological father or mother. And the scripture didn't say that Melchizedek came from any line. All right? As in the Davidic line or any line. He, he, he didn't have a, mo a mother or he didn't have a father or mother. But the scripture specifically says, specifically says that our Lord came from a line. The genealogy of our Lord is in the Bible, man. Matthew, the first chapter. The genealogy of his father and the genealogy of his uh, of Mary's father. The genealogy of Mary's father is in Luke. I believe Luke, the third chapter. The genealogy of Joseph's father or fathers is in Matthew, the first chapter. Once again, the genealogy of Joseph's fathers and as a matter of fact, when you look up that word genealogy, it literally means fathers because we are reincarnated through our fathers. That's why when you read the Bible, say, who was the father of such and such, who was the father of such and such, who was the, they're giving you their, their, their geneal, genealogy line, their line of genealogy. Okay, that was very important back then. Okay. Um, so the genealogy of Joseph's fathers is found in Mary, the first chapter. The genealogy of Mary's fathers is found in Luke, the third chapter. Okay? So let's get to endure. All right? Endure. And all what I said to you is sound doctrine. Okay, I read to you uh, Matthew 24, 13, but he that shall endure unto the end shall the same shall be saved. One of the things we have to endure is, is being persecuted for this word's sake. We have to endure it. Look at all what Yahweh Shai endured. And he made it all the way to the end. Another thing we have to endure is the ability to hold on to sound doctrine. Because we've seen many Israelites out there being corrupt. Their minds are becoming corrupt. So the truth they once knew, because they couldn't endure sound doctrine, which is the truth, their minds became corrupt. All right. There's Mark 4 and 17 and have no root in themselves. Quinaf is a perfect example. He had no root. You just heard what Elder Pastor said, the way he came in. Okay, he didn't come in the right way. And Elder Pastor is going to go into that and explain that. Quinaf didn't come in this thing of ours the right way. So that's one of the reasons he had no root in, in himself and have no root in themselves. And so endure but for a time, endure but for a time, see that? Afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth, I remember he, Quinafa did a video where he, he said, the, the, you people are not supporting, you're not supporting us. So we're not going to come out here anymore and teach you. There's a video of him clearly saying that. So it's, it's clear that this guy had no root in himself and he wasn't able to continually endure the the scriptures speak about consistency consistency we have to be constant our lord look at our lord he's a perfect example of consistency and so endure but for a time afterward when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake and it will come uh, ecclesiastes ecclesiasticus the second chapter my son if thou come to serve the lord prepare your soul for temptation Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient when we're changed to a lower state. That's clear scripture. Now, a lot of guys can't deal with that. They can't deal with being brought to a lower state. They can't deal with whatever is brought upon them to take it cheerfully and endure it and keep on moving on.
and hold on to the, the sound doctrine. They can't do it, man. Certain guys just can't do it, so they tap out. Quinoff was one of them. Okay? When affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, and persecution and affliction will come. It's a given. It's a rite of passage. A lot of guys can't deal with it. Immediately, they are offended. Yeah, they, and how do you know they're offended? They start talking ill about the gospel they once learned. They start, uh, they start scoffing at it. They start making fun of it. And then they want you to believe the nonsense that they believe. Okay? They want to try to corrupt you. Now, guess what? If you're not a member of the elect, if you can't endure, you'll be corrupted by them. You listen to uh, Quinaf, and all of a sudden, because your, your mind is corrupted or has become corrupted, you'll say, right, he, you know what? He makes sense. And then you'll be corrupted. Now, if that happens to you, guess what? That means you weren't part of the elect. Because the Bible is very clear. The, the elect cannot be corrupted. The scriptures say, if were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. It's not possible. So no matter what is thrown the elect's way, their minds can never be corrupted. Let's get it. Uh, the very elect. That's why it's so important to be of that ilk, the elect. And again, I have to say it, I hope that I am part of the elect. That's why I'm giving diligence. That's why I'm doing this video. As it is written, to give diligence to make your calling and election sure. Matthew 24 and 20, Matthew 24 and 24. For there shall arise false anointeds like Quinaf. And he played the role, man. He played the role to the hill, man. He had the garment, he had the staff in his hand, like he thought he was the second coming of Moses. All right? <laughs> For there shall arise false anointeds. There you go. And false prophets, false anointed, false prophets. And guess what, brothers, sisters, there are more false anointeds, there are more false prophets than there are the true ones. The Heavenly Father designed it so. Remember, the scriptures tell us the path of truth is so narrow, only one man can tread it at a time. Let me say that one more time for you out there so you understand what you're involved in. It says the path of truth is so narrow, only one man, the Lord told, the angel told Ezra that. Is recorded in the book of Ezra. The angel told, this is not a wide path. This is not meant for everybody to get. This is the, the path of truth. The Bible is very clear on this. The path of truth is so narrow, only one man can tread it at a time. Okay? So again, the Lord said, this is what makes the path of truth narrow. The fact that you have so many false anointeds and so many false prophets out there. And they're, they themselves are deceived and they're deceiving others. Like Quinaf. Okay? For there shall arise false anointeds and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders. <laughs> See that? Insomuch that if it were possible, which it's not possible, they shall deceive the very elect. But it's not possible. Yahweh Shai said it best more than 2,000 years ago. He said, All the, all the elect are present and accounted for. The only one that, that, he, that uh, was missed. Uh, was Judas Iscariot, and that was fulfilled more than 2,000 years ago. As a matter of fact, the scriptures tell us Judas Iscariot's position was filled. Matthias was the man. All right, King David in the, in the, in the Psalms said, let his bishopric another, another take. Bishopric is another word for office. So that was fulfilled more than 2,000 years ago when the, the, re, the remaining apostles, they cast lots. And by the way, casting lots is righteous, Bishop Nathaniel. The remaining apostles, they cast lots. We read that account in Acts, the first chapter. And the, the position of uh, Judas Iscariot was filled. Judas Iscariot was filled by Matthias. So all the elect, what is the point? All the elect are present and accounted for. All of them. Okay? Every last one of them, even in this generation. They're all going to come back into their, into their order. Like, like the apostle Paul said, every man in his order. First, Yahweh Shai, who is the head of the elect, then those that, that are Yahweh Shai's. Clearly, the scripture says that. Because when Yahweh Shai comes, who's he going to gather, huh? Matthew 24 and 30, he's going to gather his elect. You see? So, again, Matthew 24 and 24 in the NLT. For false messiahs and false prophets will, will rise up, and we've seen that now, Quanaf is one of them, and perform great signs and wonders. 
so as to deceive, if possible, even the Most High's chosen ones. <laughs> so guess what, brothers? And you sisters too, you're part of the elect too. The scripture says in 1 John, the elect lady. Guess what? If you're deceived by clowns like uh, Quinaf, that means you're not part of the Heavenly Father's chosen ones. You're not part of the elect. That's, it's just that simple. Okay, you've been deceived. He's been deceived. And you're being deceived. Okay? So, let's get back to the video. Years ago, by Fopi, and the oh, title of the video. I'm sorry. I am sorry. Let's get back to endure. Okay? Endure. Because I want to show you something with the word endure. We we are to endure sound doctrine. I want to get I didn't I did not read that scripture. Alright. Um here it is right here. Second Timothy four and three. Let's get right to the point. For the time will come when they will not wait a minute, let's see. Okay, let's start at the second verse. 2 Timothy 4 and 2. Preach the word, be instant, in season, out of season. That's directed to the elect. That's what they will do. They'll preach the word, whether it be on, on, on the internet, through these videos, or whether it be out on the street. Either way, we cover both ends as we, we're searching for the Lord's elect, right? Preach, we're not, uh, uh, that's another thing too. We're not searching for the whole of Israel. <laughs> All right, this is not a movement of the masses, the Israelite masses. It's a movement of the Israelite few, as in the elect. The Lord said that his sanctuary would be a small one. So that right there lets me know a lot of Israelites do not understand what they're involved in. They think it's about numbers. Yeah, it's about numbers, all right, a very small number in comparison to the nation. That's what they don't get. But anyway, that's another video for another time. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. Right, there's no breaks. We don't take no breaks in the wintertime. All right, no matter how hot it gets, no matter how, well, within reason, of course, no matter how cold it gets, all right, within reason, right, we're out there teaching. Okay, we're out there teaching. Be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. That's what we're supposed to do. Reprove, correct. Another word for rebuke is to correct. Reprove means to correct. Rebuke means to tell. If a guy is teaching a false doctrine, he is supposed to be told off. All right. He's supposed, you're supposed to tell him off according to the scriptures. Look, man, you're going off. Okay, that's not written in the scriptures. All right, you're going off. You're not, you're not speaking the correct thing. That's our job. So it says, and it, this is not the most popular job, okay? Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Why are we supposed to do that? Here's why. For the time will come, and we're in that time now, when they will not endure sound doctrine. That's what happened with Kunaf. He was able to endure for a while, but after after a while he tapped out. He was not, he wasn't able to consistently endure sound doctrine. That's what it takes to be in this thing of ours. So that our minds are not corrupted. We have to consistently endure sound doctrine. Okay? So it says, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. That sexless virgin birth nonsense is not sound doctrine there's nothing sound about it it's not for you to believe it that means your mind is not in a healthy mind state when you look up the word sound from sound doctrine when you look it up the greek word there is hugiaino which means healthy all right for you to believe that uh, mary had sex without a husband that means you, you're insane that means your mind is not clean that means your your mind is not healthy now, if you believe that the natural way Joseph and Mary got together and had sex, which produced a line of progeny, the first one was Yahushai, the firstborn. If you believe that, then you have a healthy mind. Your mind is working right. That's sound doctrine, okay? So, again, for the, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. There you go. That's why certain Israelites believe the madness that they believe, okay? 
They cannot endure sound doctrine. We'll read that in the NLT. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts, whatever that may be, perverted lusts, <laughs> whatever, whatever that may be, after their own lusts, shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, right? Speaking things which they ought not to, like Quanaf. Only people Quanaf is going to convince are those that are reprobates just like him. And they were chosen to, to be deceived just like he's being deceived. They were chosen by the Heavenly Father to be deceived just like Quanaf is being deceived. Why? Because they're not part of the elect. It's as simple as that. If you're not part of the elect, you're going to be, you're going to be deceived. You're going to believe in that uh, um, unsound doctrine and then you're going to fall out. It's inevitable, okay? Let's read that in the NLT and go back to the video. 2 Timothy 4 and 3. For, the, for a time is coming when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching. Again, this sexless virgin birth nonsense is not sound and whole, wholesome teaching. It's not. Okay? And that's one of the reasons why many people are turning away from the so-called Roman Catholic Church. All right, that doctrine primarily came out of the Roman Catholic Church, the sexless virgin birth nonsense. And even when you put it up against the history and when you put it up against the Hebrew, it does not add up. All right, as I'm going to show you in this video, during the time of our Lord, when he walked the earth, <laughs> the townspeople of our Lord, primarily in Nazareth where he lived, they didn't believe that. <laughs> they did not believe in that sexless virgin birth crap man okay they didn't believe in that nonsense concerning our lord they knew his father they knew his mother and that's one of the reasons they didn't want to accept him all right <laughs> i mean it's so easy to understand anyway second timothy 4 and 3 for a time is coming when they when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching there you go like quenaf and the people that follow him. They will follow their own desires, right, like it says, their own lust, whatever that may be, and will look for teachers who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear. There you go. In other words, not, will tell them, they won't tell them the truth. They'll tell them lies, okay? That sexless virgin birth nonsense is a lie, okay? Let's keep reading. They will reject the truth and chase after myths. That sexless virgin birth nonsense is a myth. It's a lie. It's a myth. And it can easily be disproven. Okay? The fact that our Lord came out of the Davidic line proves that it's a myth. Because Joseph himself came out of the Davidic line. So if you're saying that our Lord did not have a biological father, you believe in a myth. Because Joseph himself came, the Bible is very clear on this, Joseph himself came out of the Davidic line. Okay, and that's one, that's one of the reasons why our Lord was called the son of David. Because Joseph came out of the lineage of David. Okay? <laughs> oh, man. But anyway, let's get back to the video. It was a faux be the virgin birth. So I'm thinking that they're going to say, you know, you're going off if you teach that um, Mary was a virgin and the Holy Spirit, you know, impregnated her and all that. But they're saying that, that no, she, she, Joseph never had sex with Mary. And that this is something that... Which is a myth. Joseph never had sex with Mary. Joseph did have, did have sex with Mary. And that's why Mary's first child, as it were, was Yahweh Shai. The first line of progeny was Yahweh Shai. And then Yahweh Shai had biological brothers. The Bible is very clear on this. Yahweh Shai had biological brothers of both parents and biological sisters. Now, if you believe any other thing, then you're chasing a myth. And you, you're certainly not part of the elect. Okay? Because the elect know the truth. They know the deal. They know that the Lord had a biological father and a biological mother when west i mean um icgjc started teaching they started converting over after uh, or around about the time when uh 
Taz Adakia started calling himself the Comforter, which the Comforter is the spirit that comes with the scriptures. Mm -hmm. uh, St. John uh, uh, chapter right. 14 and St. John chapter 16. That's right. And, and throughout the, the, the scriptures, it speaks about the Comforter. Com the Comforter, the Comforter that Yahushua spoke spoke of. Mm -hmm. He said, "I shall not keep leave you comfortless. I will come to you." So how is he coming through us through the book? Right. Uh, what is that? Psalm four. Through the book, through the Holy Spirit, Job thirty-two and eight. There's a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them the understanding. So that's done through the Holy Spirit, and that's why I, I personally I like to say the Holy Spirit is the engine of this thing of ours. You can't see it. But it doesn't mean that it's not there. Remember, what you can't see is always greater than what you can see. You can't see the angels, but tell me the angels ain't around us. The Bible clearly tells us the angels encampeth around them that, be, that believe in the Lord and, and delivereth them. Okay? So the angels are very real. They're, they're around us. And that's essentially, that's what the Holy Spirit is. The Holy Spirit is, could be an angel or, or a group of angels that are sent to us to give us understanding, to work on our minds. So we can understand this truth. How many scriptures have we read about certain prophets, angels were sent to them to give them understanding, huh? So this thing is very real, man. Be in seven, behold, I come in the volume of the book that is spoken, spoken to me. So when you read... An angel was sent to Mary, Joseph and Mary, to tell them what to name their firstborn son. His name was Gabriel, the angel Gabriel. So that proves my point. This book you're reading of Yahweh Shai, you're eating, you're supping with Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. That's right. Through, so y'all know the... Through the Spirit, through the Holy Spirit, okay, which is the, the divine presence, the energy. Even on the left-hand side, the witches and warlocks, they understand energies. Why do you think they do their seances and they, and they, they light their candles and, and, and chant Latin and all that nonsense? To, to get in touch with the left hand side, the left hand energy, so that so that those demons can do their bidding for them. Okay? Well on the right hand side, we get in touch with Yahweh Bashim Shai, the righteous energy. Okay? Or well, should know the history of Fopi. Fopi came in uh but through uh the H O D C and I know why they came in there, so they can call the you know Elder Quinnath, and he called himself, he just, all of a sudden, one day he was Quinnath, and then he became Elder Quinnath, I yeah. think. A self, a self professed elder. And the scripture also tells us about guys like that. They take on these lofty titles. They love to be called rabbi. You know, that's another sign of your, your wicked Pharisees, Sadducees, and scribes. Okay? Love to be called rabbi, which, which interpreted means master, master. Years in. Well, you might say, well, what about you? You begin with apostle. What about you? you? You guys call yourself apostles. Yeah, well, Elder Pasta used the term apostle. At first, it was like a joke because we were, make, we were making, uh, taking a stab at Bishop Nathaniel. But then when you go into the word apostle, right? Apostle just means sent away. So indeed, we are apostles. The word is from the Greek apostolos, which means sent away. We've been sent away through the Holy Spirit to teach this gospel. That's our job. So we're not, we're not, um, we're not going off when, when, we, uh, when we say we're apostles. We've been sent away. Also, we are elders. All right? elder, an elder is, is someone, according to the law, someone who's been in, in the service of the ministry for more than 25 years is an elder. Okay? He can, and he can even retire if he wants to. But, however, in this thing of ours, there's no room for retiring. We, we, we cannot leave our post. We, we talked about that yesterday at the camp uh, on the street, the street ministry. Saturday, we talked about that. We read scriptures on that. You know, Habakkuk talked about uh, holding on to his post. That's Habakkuk, the second chapter. Isaiah, the 21st chapter. Isaiah talked about holding on to his post, never leaving his post. See that? So there you go. I remember, uh, uh, what, uh, a year or two ago, uh, the head of Sakari made a statement concerning Elder Pastor uh, Alazar. He said that Elder Pastor should retire. He's too old for the priesthood. Some nonsense like that. 
uh, there ain't no retiring. We can't leave our post until the Lord comes. The Lord commanded us to watch until he comes. Blessed, as to quote that scripture, blessed is he when the Lord cometh shall find him doing, so doing, doing what? Doing the work. So there is no room for no retirement, okay? And um, he came He came up in the HODC because he said, oh, I can I can do what I want to do. I can come and go as I please. That's right. He, he probably thought about going to GMS. He said, I ain't going to join GMS because GMS is going to, I got to be out in the camp and I got to do this and there's yep. too, many, too many, you know, orders I got to take. I, I, I want to do it my way. So basically, Quinoff didn't come in the straight gate. What does it say in Matthew 7? That's what Elder Pastor is saying about Quinoff. He didn't come in the straight gate. So that's why he wasn't able to endure sound doctrine. Okay? Matthew 7 and 13. You know, he put on, he had the he had the outward look. He had the garment. He had the, the staff and all that. Looking like Aaron. <laughs> but he didn't come in the right way. That's why he was enabled on, uh, to uh, endure sound doctrine. Matthew 7, 13. Enter in at the straight gate. Straight means a position of difficulty. So, Quinoff wasn't ready to deal with that. He wasn't serious. He wasn't ready to put his feet, like it says in the Apocrypha, he wasn't ready to put his feet in the, in the fetters of this doctrine. He was not ready to put his feet, like it says in the Apocrypha, in the fetters of this doctrine. Okay? He wasn't ready to go through the straight gate. That's why so many Israelites tap out because they're not ready to go through the straight gate. They're not ready to become poor. They're not ready to be afflicted for this gospel. Okay? <laughs> Enter in at the straight gate. But the Lord tells us, these, these words were, were given to us by Yahweh Shai. That's why it's written in red. Enter in at the straight gate. Okay? The narrow gate. Look at the NLT. The narrow gate. Enter in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. There you go. The easier road. The, 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 the soft road. That's why that's what the road that many of these Israelites take. They don't take the difficult road in this ministry. No, they take the soft road. And that's what you hear Elder Pastor saying about Quanaf. He took the soft road. That's why I didn't want to deal with GMS. GMS, we take great millstone. We're like our name, stone. The Bible says that we are stones in this thing of ours. We are lively stones. A stone is rough, man. You take a good-sized stone and you pelt it to someone, they're going to feel it, man. Okay? They are going to feel it. Guys like Quinaf, those, those, are, those are mud. Little hard-packed mud. <laughs> that falls apart as soon as you grab it. No, we, we're stones. You can take a nice, good-sized stone, right? That's people in the islands are famous for doing that. They'll take a stone and throw it at you, man, like 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 they pointing a gun at you and try to take your eye out. I know, okay. I came up in St. Lucia around that time, uh, the the mid seventies. St. Lucians were famous for that stoning people, and not just St. Lucia, mostly all the islands. They're they're very well known for stoning people. Okay, so don't tell me about stones. The Bible say we are lively stones, great millstone. Okay, so a stone is hard, and that's how you have to be in this knowledge is truth. You have to be hard in the mind. You have to, you have to be hard in the mind. You have to endure sound doctrine. The word endure means to be hard, durable. That's where you get the word durable from. Endure comes from durable, from the Latin, which means to make hard. Okay, let's keep moving. In, <clears throat> give the ISUPK pretty much the same reason because ISUPK put you in a certain, this, this is your whole post. You did. When we tell you to read, you can read. When we right. tell you to, you can speak, you can speak. So, you know, he went with the HODC, which is a relatively weak camp because. The, the, he took the soft road. Excuse me. That's why he wasn't able to endure sound doctrine. He was never hard to begin with. He didn't take the straight gate. Okay? Talking about Quinaf. You could do what you want. And then you had Barack and and uh Elder Barack and Elder Ben go down there and actually speak and back this guy up. And then this guy stabbed them guys in the back. 
He did his own thing. And then he did a disappearing act. This man is not a man of the Lord. Nope. He's an Israelite. He'll be in yep. the kingdom yep. in, the, in the future, but he's not a prophet. He's not, one, and I'm not just. He's not one of the Israel of God. Galatians 6 and 17, either 17 or 16 verse. The apostle Paul talked about a certain group among the Israelites called the Israel of God, which is another title for the elect. Like Elder Pastor said about Kornav, he's an Israelite and he's going to be destroyed and he's going to come back in the kingdom through, through the elect that make it. All right. And that's when he, uh, that's when Ezekiel comes into play. Ezekiel, the 38th chapter going in 39th chapter. There you shall loathe yourselves for your, for your doings that which were not good. So he's going to remember how he were, once was called in the truth. Right. He was called into the truth, but he couldn't endure and he's going to be ashamed of himself in the kingdom. I'm talking about Quanaf. That's his, that's his future. But as if, as as him, as it stands right now, him being a part of the elect, and the, uh, the answer is no. He's certainly not a part of the elect. That's why he's vomited everything that he's learned, and you can clearly hear it in this video. Anyway, let's move on. I'm not. I didn't say let me get up, and let me get on, <laughs> Elder Quanaf and Popey. Right. I didn't. I didn't that's get right. up. Say I didn't even know I was going to come across this video but i'm right. going you know how you go through different videos well the holy spirit jumped on el apostol to say what he's saying we speak the lord told moses it's not you that speak it's i that speak within you through you you don't want the heavenly father himself to come down and speak to you, you, you we'd be all be dead that's proven in the book of Ex exodus okay when the most high speaks <laughs> very few people are alive <laughs> the most high speaks through us man Okay, Yahweh Bashim Yahushai speaks to us. When Yahweh Shai comes, he ain't going to be speaking. The Bible is very clear on how Yahweh Shai is returning. He's, he's, Isaiah 66, 15, Isaiah the 47th chapter. Yahweh Shai is coming to kick ass, man. The slain of the Lord shall be many. So the point I'm making is the ones who speak for the Heavenly Father's only begotten Son is us. Okay. So I came, I saw the word, the virgin birth, and I'm, like I said, I said, I know they're going to be cursing out guys that teach that Roman Catholic doctrine that I just knew, I just knew he's going to say Joseph had sex with, with Mary. Mm -hmm. So I'm listening just to confirm it. Right. And I hear this madness. Right. So anyway, and see, you should take a lesson from uh, the so-called God sent comforter. That's right. You see the boat, the Roman Catholic crap polar that he was teaching what? right the so-called god sent comforter tazadak tazadak bar or tazadakwia i think that's that's how you said his name if i remember correctly all right he was teaching that sexless virgin birth nonsense and where is he now like like the scripture have said whose mouths must be stopped eventually how about shimmy Shai silenced his mouth Amount of crap that he was teaching, like you heard that old apostle said, the crapola. Amount of crap Tazadakwia was teaching, all right, was the virgin, the sex, sexless virgin birth nonsense. And eventually, how about Shimei Shai got tired of that, that dude and silenced him. And it'll be the same for all that teach that nonsense. Eventually, your day of silence is coming, because that's not the truth. The Bible is very clear. Speak sound doctrine that's not sound doctrine that sexless virgin birth nonsense of the, that came out of the roman catholic church is not sound doctrine where's this where's he now where's this nigga now exactly but he ain't a nigga no more he's a he's a proper israelite in his right mind that's right and when he comes back he's gonna have his head down we're gonna pat him on the back he said don't worry yeah. tells doctor you good and that's what elder pastor said that that's sound doctrine that's pursuant to Ezekiel, the 38th chapter, going into the 39th chapter. It tells what's going to happen in the kingdom. All these reprobates, they, they're going to feel ashamed of themselves in the kingdom because they're all going to be back. Okay, they're going to be able to re reflect on what happened in, uh, right now, what happened now, how they, how they could not endure sound doctrine. Okay, so let's move on. So, death is not a bad thing. Nope, not at all. But anyway... This is a lot of math, but, oh, like I said the other day, oh, in the speaking, I said, uh, 
I said, the mo I said, if there's somebody Israelites is teaching wrong, they're set up that way by the Most High. Yep. The deceived, the, the deceive, the deceived, and the deceiver are mine. That's right, Job twelve and sixteen, and also which I believe Apostle is going to quote it. This scripture where Yahweh Shai, or rather Yahweh, clearly said, if if a false prophet speak a thing that deceived the people, I the Lord have deceived that false prophet. Then the Heavenly Father goes on. To, in other words, the Heavenly Father creates the false prophet. Then he, then he goes on to say he's going to stretch out his hand and destroy them. That's why it's so important to fear Yahweh Shimei Shai. Because he can create a false prophet, which he has done. He's created many. There are more false prophets and false teachers than there are true ones. And guess who created them? The Heavenly Father for his own purpose. He said he's going to create them and make an example out of them. Stretch out his hand and destroy them. And that's what we see now, man. And Kunaf is one of them. Uh, the Most High set up a stumbling block. High right. the Lord set up a stumbling block stumbling before block. him. Mm -hmm. I believe that's Ezekiel chapter 3, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not going to go look for it. But uh, the, 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 term or the, the, the term stumbling block is mentioned in the scriptures that's right. uh, many times. Right. So there's and there are many stumbling blocks. The stumbling block is designed to, to make the ones that are not called, or rather not chosen, to make them fall. They're called but not chosen. The Heavenly Father designed what is called a stumbling block. That right there lets you know this knowledge was not meant for everyone to get. That's why there's stumbling blocks on the path of this truth. Certain guys are set up to be a stumbling block. Now, how many of these Israelites understand that? That's why we keep telling you, Israelites out there, a lot of you, you don't know what you're involved in. You don't understand what you're involved in. There's stumbling blocks on this path of truth, man. And it's designed to, 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 to stumble, to, for you to stumble. It is, it's designed to trip you up. That's why you have to be vigilant. Scriptures speak about being vigilant. You have to understand what you're involved in. Two stumbling blocks where the Lord says, do not put a stumbling block before the blind meaning a rock or, an, or something that the, the blind would fall over. Right. But then there's a spiritual stumbling block when you teach somebody the wrong thing right. and, they, and they stumble into that, into that thing that you taught them. Right. And going back to the IUIC. Right, like Comfy. Comfy was set up to be a major stumbling block. He took a lot of guys out. All right, Bishop Nathaniel, as it stands right now, he's set up to be a stumbling block. Okay. <clears throat> Number one, they, no, one thing that they teach is uh, the MOTB is um, is uh, sin in all of its forms, right. whether religious or political, whatever the hell that means. And how do you know a guy is set up to be a stumbling block? Well, again, you like the scriptures say, you try the spirit. What did the scripture say? The scripture says, not that which goeth into a man that defileth him, but that which cometh out, meaning what he says, how he teaches the doctrine. If he's teaching it correctly, then he's not a stumbling block. But if he's teaching the doctrine incorrectly, he's not speaking sound doctrine, he is a stumbling block. And he's designed, as it is written, the simple believeth every word. And if you're simple, you're going to believe his nonsense and you're going to fall out right along with him. You've just been taken out by the stumbling block, which the Heavenly Father himself set up. His name is Yahweh. Okay? It's not complicated, people. It's very simple. It's very cut and dry. Okay? Whatever the hell that means. <clears throat> so now, when they actually institute, <clears throat> make it mandatory to get the chip, a lot of you guys are going to take it unless uh, the leader of uh, the IUIC says, look, we were wrong. Do not take it. The GMS was right. Which, if, if he says that, I'll... I'm going to be looking up in the sky to see if the missiles are in the <laughs> yeah, atmosphere. If he, I see hell freeze over. Okay, so I'm going to stop it there. Now, before I go, let's let's quickly go into two points I want to make concerning the... Because I, I didn't realize I was going to go into that. But I'm going to do a response to, to this video, parts of this video. One, this video here, this video is, is dynamite, like Elder... High Priest, um, yeah, yeah, Iqwab used to say, the father of Elder High Priest Ariah, it's dynamite, right? Whosoever have not 
from him shall be taken away even that he hath. Right, and that happened to Quanaf. Now, let's deal with this virgin birth nonsense. First, let's go to, before we go to the, the part, the title of the video, uh, they knew his parents. Let's deal with the Hebrew, okay? Let's deal with the Hebrew. Well, actually, there's three points to be made. Let's go to point number one. If we go into Hebrew, the Hebrew word there for virgin in Genesis 24, what is it, Genesis 24, this is, has to do with when a bride was chosen for Isaac, which that would happen to be Rebecca, right? Rebecca was described as a virgin. Okay, let's, let me show you that. 24, okay, this is under the section, Rebecca is chosen, all right? Rebecca being the wife of Isaac. And it came to pass before he had done speaking that behold, Rebekah came out, who was born to Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, which, I'm sorry, with her pitcher upon her shoulder. And the damsel was very fair to look upon, very beautiful, a virgin, neither had any man known her. So, the use of the word virgin here, right? Now, if you look at the NLT, it says, and old enough to be married. Exactly. The use of the word virgin here, in the context, the Hebrew word there is bathwala. The way you pronounce this is bathwala, bathwala. And what does the word bathwala mean? All right, this is a, woman who is indeed a virgin never been touched by a man all right she was rebecca was chosen to be isaac's wife rebecca was chosen to be isaac's wife and no man had got to her no man had touched her all right she was a brand new package that isaac would have the pleasure of opening okay so you can understand and the word for that, that brand new package, was Bathwala. No man ever touched her. Let's read it. This is from the Genuous Hebrew Chaldee Lexicon. All right. It says, Bathwala, as you see the Hebrew there, a virgin, pure and unspotted, so-called as being separated and secluded from intercourse with men. All right. So no man had touched her. Isaac would be the first and only man to touch her, have sex with her. And that's exactly what happened. Isaac took Rebekah and took her into his tent, his mother's tent, as the scripture have said, and he popped her and she became his woman. End of story. Okay? So now, let's get back. I direct, again, direct your attention to the Hebrew word there for virgin. The use of it, bathwala. However, now this is the Old Testament, right? Genesis. However, right, uh, when you go in the Hebrew for the virgin in the case of the scripture Isaiah, which is the prophecy where it speaks about what will become known as Mary having a, a child. When we go to Isaiah 7 and 14, right, Isaiah 7 and 14, therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel, which means the the power is with us. Now, the question is, is there a different word there in Isaiah 7.14 for virgin? All right, is it different from the word in Genesis, the 24th chapter, the previous scripture we read? Genesis, the 24th chapter, the 16th verse. Again, let me re refresh your memory. Bathwala was the, the, the word there for virgin. All right, as you see here, Bathwala. That's Genesis 24 and 16. However, when you go to Hebrews 7, I'm Hebrews, Isaiah 7 and 14, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign, Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Notice there's a different word there for virgin. That's why it's so important to know the Hebrew. Okay? And there you have it. I lama, I lama. That's, the, that's the, the, the Hebrew word there for virgin. Well, now, what does Ilama mean? 
virgin, young woman. Indeed, and Mary was very young. When Joseph took her to wife, Mary was very young. Very young woman. All right. Of marriageable age. Mary, Mary had sex with Joseph. She was a young woman who had sex with Joseph. That's basically what the word Ilama means. A young woman of marriageable age. Because you can have an older woman of marriageable age. But in this case, Mary was a very young woman of marriageable age. Meaning, Joseph had every right to pop her, to make her his woman, to have sex with her. She was of that age. She was past the flower. A young woman of marriageable age, we go back to what the Apostle Paul said, she was way past the flower. Her flower came, which is her period, which is a sign she's able to bear children. And that's exactly what she did. She ended up bearing her firstborn son, which was Yahweh Shai. And Yahweh Shai had progeny. All right? I'm sorry. <laughs> Joseph had progeny. Yahweh Shai being the first. What I meant to say is Yahweh Shai had relatives, as in brothers and sisters. Okay, that's what I meant to say. Forgive my slip up. Okay? Then this, this is so easy to understand. All what I'm saying to you is sound doctrine. But then you have those that have been corrupted. Their minds have been corrupted. And they're going to tell you different. And they're, they're designed to tell you that. So you could, you're you not part of the elect. You're going to believe it and fall right into destruction right along with them. Okay? So there you go. So, the again, to recap, the Hebrew word for, uh, for perpetual virgin is a bathwala, a woman that's never been touched by a man, Bathwala. Now, a young woman who's of marriageable age, the Hebrew word there is Ailama. Okay, Ailama. A young woman of marriageable age means she's already been married. She's a young woman, already had sex. Okay, Ailama. A, wo a young woman who's never had sex, Bathwala. It's just that simple to understand. Okay, so that's the first point with the Hebrew. All right, now there was a second point I wanted to make. The second point is going to the history now. So I typed in in Google, right, when did the virgin birth come to prominence? And this is what I found. Tales of virgin birth and the impregnation of mortal women by deities were, were well known in the first century. Excuse me, Greco-Roman world. And second temple Jewish works were also capable of producing accounts of the Appearances of angels and miraculous births for ancient heroes such as Melchizedek, Noah, and Moses. They went off on that. There was no birth of Melchizedek. They went off on that. Melchizedek just appeared. He had no father or mother. And scriptures don't speak of his miraculous birth. So I don't. that's conjecture. Let's stick to what the scripture says. So here's another account. When did the idea of the virgin birth start? Listen to this. The idea first appeared around 177 to 180 A.D. Now, if our Lord came on the scene, he died around and was resurrected around 33 A.D., went back to the Father, and he's been in the spirit world ever since. This is well after, this is almost 140 uh, years after the death and resurrection of our Lord. That's when the idea, according to this uh, uh, account, that's when the idea of the virgin birth appeared, 177 to 180 A.D. That's way after the death and resurrection of our Lord. That's why I make the point in the, in the time of our Lord, that simply was not taught concerning our Lord. And how do we prove that now? How do we prove that? Well, let's go to the book of John. That's why I have over here, I have um, the scripture, John 6 and 42. John 6 and 42 lets me know that was not taught back then. When we get into what's, what was written. John 6 and 42. Let's get that. Okay, it says. Now, this is a, um, Yahweh Shai is having a conversation with his own people. From the town where he was from, which is Nazareth. Right? John 6 and 41. Words to the Jews. The majority of people in our Lord's town was of the southern kingdom. The term Jews goes back to the southern kingdom. Judah, Benjamin, Levi. The majority of Israelites that lived around our Lord came from either of those three tribes, hence the reason why they were called Jews. 
The southern kingdom was called the, also known as the kingdom of Judah. You had the northern kingdom, you had the southern kingdom. All right, the southern kingdom consisted of three tribes, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. And they primarily lived around our Lord's area, Jerusalem, Nazareth, Galilee, etc., etc. So the townspeople of our Lord, they had a problem accepting Yahweh as being the savior of the nation of Israel. Basically, Yahweh said, look, I'm the savior that the heavenly father have chosen. Not the laws, statutes, and commandments that's going to save you. No, I'm the savior that the Lord has, has appointed to save you, save you Israelites. And the majority of the Jews around that area did not want to hear it. They didn't want to hear the Lord say it. They were offended in the Lord. Why? That's the main reason concerning this video. Why? One of the reasons is because they knew his family. They knew his father and mother. Let's read John 6 and 41. Then the Jews, or the Jews then murmured, at him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. There you go. What does that mean? Meaning I'm the wisdom that the Heavenly Father has sent to you Israelites. If you learn of me, then you will find salvation. I'm the one that the Heavenly Father has set up for salvation. They didn't want to hear that, man. Let's keep reading. Let's keep reading. And they said, is not this Yahweh Shai? They wouldn't have said Jesus. The letter J didn't come about till 1524. It's impossible they wouldn't have said Jesus. Jesus is not even a word. If you want to go back to the Greek, the Greek word there would have been Iesus. Iesus. Now, we know that our Lord was not Greek. His nationality was Hebrew. So in the Hebrew, it would be Yahweh Shai. You see how that Jesus is destroyed? Okay, very simple. This is sound doctrine, people. So it says, and they said, is not this Yahweh Shai? That's what they would have said, right? And concerning the name, that is. The son of Joseph, you see that? The son of Joseph. They knew that Yahweh Shai was Joseph's son. What national, what, not national, what occupation was Joseph? He was a carpenter. What occupation was our Lord? He was a carpenter. You see that? <laughs> let's read, let's read it again. And they said, is not this Yahweh Shai, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? That's why I named this title of this video. They knew his parents. They said, look, we know your father. We know your mother. What makes you so special? Now, just look, let's use extrapolation. If it was known that Yahweh Shai's father was some deity, some angel or something, he would have got respect. They would have had no problem accepting what he, what he said, saying he's the bread that came down from him. They would have said, yeah, you know what? That's true because his father was this angel or this special deity. So we should believe him when he said he's this bread that came down from heaven. No, people, they didn't believe him because he, they knew his father. They knew Joseph. He was, the, he was the resident carpenter. He probably did work for them Jews, man, in their homes. That's what carpenters do. They enter in your home and they, and they help fix, it, uh, fix things, right? Either They're not doing that. They're building new buildings, new homes. That's what Joseph did. And the townspeople knew him. Right? <laughs> what is so hard to understand about that? And they said, is not this Yahweh Shai, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? And that's how I know back then, this is around 33 AD that I'm reading. Even I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, around 30 AD, 29 AD, 30 AD, 31 AD, 32 AD, somewhere around there. But however, <laughs> according to this document, the idea of the virgin birth didn't come about until 177 to 180 AD. This is many years after the death and resurrection of our Lord. So it don't add up, people. The point is, uh, Yahweh Shai's townspeople did not believe that Mary had, was the sexless virgin that had a child. They didn't believe that nonsense, nor was that taught. It was completely ridiculous. Okay, that understanding or lack thereof didn't come about until 177 180 AD okay and that's how it's that's how I know it's impossible that, that's how I know that virgin sexist virgin birth crap is impossible okay John 6 and 42 and they said is not this Yahweh Shai the son of Joseph whose father and mother we know how is it that then that he saith I came down from heaven once again people 
brothers and sisters, if it was known that our Lord's father was some supernatural deity, they wouldn't have no problem accepting him when he said he's the bread that came down from heaven. They would have no problem accepting that. After all, his father was this supernatural deity. Right? No. They knew his father. They knew his father. They knew his mother. He had a biological father just like all of us. He had a biological mother just like all of us. He came the way that we all came, which is via sex. His father shot his wad into his mother, and hence he was born. It was known back then. So that sexless virgin nonsense, that was not taught among the people concerning our Lord. Okay? That didn't come till way later, that corruption. This kind of reminds you of what the Apostle Paul said about grievous wolves shall enter corrupting the flock. That's an example of, of, a, of a teaching of a grievous wolf. That's in Acts, the 20th chapter, corrupting the gospel. All right? That didn't come till way later. Okay? So pretty much that's the video. Hopefully you were edified by this video. If you was, drop a line in the comment section. Like I said, I'm going to be going back to Elder Postal's video. Right? This video here. Let's take a look at it one more time. Freeze over. This video here. I'm going to be, there's a lot, there's different parts of this video that I want to address. Certain things that were said concerning, especially the stuff Fopi was saying. And look, you get mad at guys like that, but I'm truly, am I mad at, at, at Kornoff from Fopi? No. He, he had a part to play. He had a part to play, which is to be a reprobate. Like Yahweh Shai said, leave them alone. They be blind, leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, what's going to happen? Both is going to fall into that ditch. Remember, the path of truth is only narrow, so narrow that only one man can tread it at a time. This is not a movement of the Israelite masses. It's not meant for everyone to get this knowledge, this truth, 100%. Okay? And they are more false teachers and false prophets than they are real ones, the true ones. So never forget that. So on that note, on to the next one.